Hi everyone, welcome to this 10 minute medicine session on AF and fast AF. I'm Dr. Andrea O'Leary and let's get into it. So, when I get called on call uh, for a tachycardia in an elderly person, the first thing on my list is AF. Of course, you need to keep all other options open, but usually um, that's what you're running into. When you are on the medical ward round, if you're preparing the notes and because you're a good F1, you've looked at the ECG uh, before the consultant gets there. If you notice that they are an AF, or you think they are, um, you want to check the medical history because it's not uncommon that you will actually have picked up on a new AF that, uh, that needs to have consideration for anticoagulation. There's also the emergency setting, of course. You can be rung up on call. A uh, nurse might tell you they, you know, they're tacky, 120, 130 is not uncommon. And these, especially the elderly patients, can decompensate quite quickly. Um, I put the term going off there, trying to pepper in some language that, that we use on the wards that you might not be uh, as familiar with. But uh, usually I'm, I'm worried about the blood pressure. So the first question I'll ask is what's the blood pressure? We'll get all the rest of the odds as well, but uh, you're worried about them. Uh, dropping their blood pressure and um, and getting worse thereafter. So we'll talk about principles of treatment briefly, so rate and rhythm control, and also the fact that you can't just treat the symptom, which is the tachycardia. You want to think about, well, what's causing it? Because you, you don't always need to throw beta blockers at them. Sometimes it's more effective to treat the cause if that will work better. And another note here that I've mentioned, which I don't think I was as aware of at the beginning, is that, well, actually, you can you might find that someone's in sinus, but they do have paroxysmal AF, and you need to treat that uh, from a preventative point of view pretty similarly. So you've got to recognize it and consider anticoagulation. So we're talking about the non-emergency setting here. So you've found on the ward round that you've got a patient with new AF, they've come in, they were tacky and, and all the rest of it. Maybe they had a you know classic um, would be Elderly female has a UTI. She was tachycardic. Her admission ECG showed new AF. So um, I don't think I need to go through the recognition of it. Um, you can look that up in your own time, but irregularly irregular, and it's in the name. You can see the atria here are fibrillating. They're basically wobbling around, not doing very much, not being much use at the time. So. On, the, on that ward round, on that ward round, you want to make sure that the consultant is aware and start talking about anticoagulation. Talk about um, the pros and cons based on what you know about the patient. Um, you want to talk to the patient about it later on and tell them those pros and cons. Um, when you get to them, it'd be good to give them some numbers and have performed a Chad's Basque and a Hasbled, uh, assuming you know what they are. Um, look it up if not, but basically then you would be going up to them later on possibly go to them the next day give them more information give them a leaflet as well and uh, start talking to them about DOAX so I, it's only a couple of years since I qualified but we were talking about warfarin an awful lot even in just these two years I've um, seen much much less warfarin than I did at the beginning so you will probably see very little of it so the emergency situation so if you're taking handover from a nurse who's called you up saying she's worried about patients, she's found they've got a news of whatever, ask for the rest of the observations. It's easy to listen to a handover and say, okay, that sounds bad and I'll be right there. Well, it might take you five minutes to get there. It might take you a lot longer, but if you're going straight there, it might take a few minutes. In the meantime, they could be doing an ECG. If you've got a patient with a tachycardia, you don't know that it's AF um, before you get there, but get the nurse doing an ECG, you're possibly going to want some bloods, depending on the situation. Um, you probably want to ask for those when you get there and you've got a bit of context, and we'll talk a bit more about context afterwards. But uh, you've also got to figure out, sometimes the handover indicates a higher or lesser degree of worry than maybe you think was warranted when you get there. I've certainly gotten to some situations and thought, well, the hairs on the back of your neck might stand up, and that's a good indication that you should pull the call bell and 
consider a peri arrest. If you get into the position, this, this is what I found after a few peri situations. If you feel like the words enter your mind, should I put out a peri arrest? The answer is yes, because you're going to get in trouble if you are over, you know, under cautious. If you're over cautious and maybe you know, maybe that wasn't quite necessary. That's always a better outcome, and people, you know, the crash team will be there in a couple of minutes, and they'll be gone uh, even sooner. But um, you may even hear over the phone if the blood pressure has dropped significantly, um, and you're worried that they could be shocked. Um, you know, if they've got chest pain as well, if if they're sounding pretty ropey, then you may want to escalate that pretty early on. And as I said pulling the call bell to get everyone's attention because a lot of people on the ward might think, well, the doctor's there, so they'll handle it. Well, you often need many extra pairs of hands for someone that's quite unwell. Pull the call bell, gets everyone's attention, and it's often necessary. So if, if they're moderately unwell and you know you, you could manage it and you, you can do your A to E, of course, uh, that's, that's the ideal situation. Get a feel for it what's you know what's going on and then escalate it after that so called med reg you know, I, I was called to see this patient um this is my assessment i you know i've taken a bit of a history i've done an a to e this is what i've done already um if you're very worried could you please come and see them as well um if, if you think you might have done the right thing but want to check then you know ask ask for their advice and of course if they have a tachyarrhythmia follow that protocol and on that subject you know, we'll be talking usually about giving beta blockers in this situation, but of course there are contraindications. Um, what you also need to think about is, is I think simple things like dehydration can push people into fast AF. So sometimes just giving them fluids at a reasonable rate, um, you know, if, if they're not comorbid, then you could, you could pump some fluids in pretty quick, but if they've got quite a degree of heart failure, maybe, uh, maybe they need slower fluids and maybe they will need a bit of prosopolol but then as we'll get on to later something like digoxin might be a bit more appropriate and this is where the kind of the nuance comes in and, and you'll need that bit of extra help but uh, you know if, if they're tachycardic enough to warrant a, a call you know well over 100 then a cardiac monitor would definitely be advisable uh, if prosopolol is contraindicated you go for your calcium channel blockers um, if you want rapid rate control metoprolol will definitely help um, in, in the right circumstances. Of course, it would always be ideal to uh, control things quickly, but you know, you'll fix it quickly and it will go back to uh, the start pretty quickly as well, because it's, it's going to be metabolized a lot quicker than bisoprolol. And then if you get in really sticky situations, then there's always talk about amiodarone, but uh, that, would be, that would be much later on. So, when you get to see your patients, if they're not terribly unwell, you want to get a nice good history, but I'm going to go through the order in which you'll do things here roughly. So from the history, you might, you know, if they have associated chest pain, that could just be, you know, the myocardial ischemia uh, initiated by pumping very quickly and not being able to keep up and get enough oxygen in, but it could reflect a PE or, or an MI. Um, when you do your examination, you can pick up on things. If they're very dehydrated, you'll be able to see that. You know, dry mucous membranes, uh, and reduced uh, skin turgor, all the rest of it. Um, they might have the opposite. They might be massively overloaded, and they might need offloading. You might hear crackles on the chest that, that weren't there before from the morning ward round, so you want to compare notes. And you might hear a new murmur for one reason or another post MI, uh, would be the most common. But uh, yeah you would have looked at the ECG, hopefully you would have had an ECG performed while you're on the way there and you'd see if there were anything particularly concerning, um, if, they, if they were having an MI of any sort. And, you know, you, it, once, once they're stable and you're happy and you can start doing your investigations that take longer to come back, you'll do your bloods. And of course, you'll check for things uh, like thyroid function, check your electrolytes because that's something that can be replaced rapidly. It's something that can be very dangerous if they're of course, potassium in particular, uh, very high or low. And um, again, bloods, you will direct that. Um, you're not going to do, you know, you're not going to do a D-dime on everyone and you're not going to do a troponin on everyone. It's going to depend on the context, isn't it? The history and the examination and, and what they're in for. So 
the the overall message is really you can you can come up with a massive list of blood tests that you would do for a tachycardia but once you get there and you get get the impression you don't want to overload the lab and incur a huge amount of cost and arguably from our point of view more importantly confuse the clinical picture so overall i would say get them nice and stable you can do that with some fluids or maybe you need to initiate some, some antibiotics um, and just check check with the registrar as well um, they do want to know.